I stood in the darkened corner of the ballroom, watching the couple sway across the dance floor. Their eyes were locked on one another. The woman's breasts rose and fell as her partner pulled her even closer than one thought possible. Her petite body molded itself against his large frame. They were elegance in motion. He moved with the grace of an athlete, and she followed his lead well. All eyes were upon them. There was an emotional bond between them, perhaps not love, but the connection was stronger than friendship. Her honey blonde hair moved with the gentleness of the tie, swaying as she kept her body plastered against his, not that she had much shows, as tightly as the handsome man was holding her. I would have been envious of their connection if the woman hadn't been my wife of 11 years in the arms of her boss. Instead, I felt anger and humiliation. This wasn't our first time at her company's annual awards and appreciation banquet. We had lobbed eight others over the years and everyone with any tenure in the company knew she was my wife. I could see people searching for me as we all watched the spectacle being played out in front of us. They were all waiting for the explosion. After three dances, they walked off the floor together, joining other colleagues at a round table in the middle of the room. I watched as she gazed at him with those bedroom eyes that were once just mine. Not that I had seen them recently, but that didn't diminish the disgust that swelled inside of me. The only thing that came to mind was, it won't be long now. This kettle would need to boil over soon, I just needed to hold on a little bit longer. I was struggling with reconciling my fear, hate, and resentment of this scene be for me with the love, respect, and trust I once held for my beautiful wife. It's a battle I was losing, try as I might to overcome these feelings, but now, I was falling into despair and self-pity. I hung my head in defeat, I'd worked so hard over the past months to try and win her back, to repair the damage in our marriage. I had scheduled date nights, picked up household chores, turned the TV off, and tried to start conversations only to have her walk away. I left flowers, notes, and cards with loving sentiments, just to find them in the garbage. I sent flowers to her work and never even her if she got them or not. What else can I do now but wait I thought to myself dot dot. I shook the thoughts from my head as I made my way back to the temporary bar in the corner of the room and stood behind Marianne, one of Kelsey's longtime work friends. Having any fun, I asked trying to keep up a nonchalant appearance. I always enjoy these yearly parties. Harold loves the free booze, she answered. I smiled with a nod, raising my empty glass. Me too. Hey. I haven't seen Jason's wife tonight. Did she make it? I hope my eagerness wasn't showing. She always dresses so elegantly and is a joe to chat with. Oh, didn't Kells mention? Jason served her with divorce papers today. I guess she had been neglecting her wifely duties. I'd caught Marianne at just the right stage of drunkenness to not give much thought about the words coming out of her mouth. I wasn't disappointed with the results, no, I guess not, being a Friday night and all. We came here right after I got home from work and we haven't had a chance to gossip, I'd covered my bases, but it was a direct lie. We had taken the afternoon off to go home and prepare for the evening. She'd had plenty of time to mention it but chose not to. I refilled my captain and diet, retrieved a glass of white wine for Kelsey, and headed over to the table where she and Jason were standing. Neither saw me approach, they were too engrossed in each other. Kels, I got you a glass of wine. I extended the glass toward her. She jumped a little as I spoke. Oh, you startled me. She squeaked and accepted the glass. Thank you. Han, the others became more uncomfortable the longer we all stood there. Most found something remarkably interesting in the stained tablecloth or across the room and wouldn't look directly at me. Others stared, probably wondering what I was thinking and how blind could I be. A younger man, about 25, even smirked as he watched me observe the table. He and I locked eyes, he held out for a couple of seconds then his smirk disappeared, and he too found the tablecloth to be interesting. We were coming up onto 1 a.m. and many of the guests had already filed out of the hotel's ballroom, headed for home. But I could tell Kelsey wasn't ready to break from her dance partner. We should probably head home, honey. I still have to run the babysitter home, and we promised her we wouldn't be past to tonight, I mentioned, aware that I was interrupting her time with Jason. Yeah. Okay. Guess we have to go. I'll see you Monday, she smiled. There was visible relief from all around us that the awkwardness was almost at an end. Jason, good to see you. I reached my hand out and we shook. 
He was a powerful man, and he did his best to demonstrate it with his tightening grip. He had three inches on my six feet, but I outweighed him by about 15 pounds, me with a small pouch to my gut. I applied a little more pressure than normal, looking straight into his eyes and seeing deception and smugness reflected there. He finally dropped a shake and bid us good night. I waved at the others as we made our way from the room towards the car. We didn't speak on the ride home though she had a smile that made her look radiant. Once we were home Kelsey went to check on Caitlin, our nine-year-old daughter, as I paid Brittany and prepared to take her home. Upon my return, I went to the bedroom to find Kelsey already in bed and asleep. I checked on Caitlin, used the bathroom, and went to sleep in spare room. I knew there was no chance of sex tonight, I could hardly remember that last time we were together. My eyes closed with the last you being at the ceiling as I fell into a fitful sleep running through my internal checklist for tomorrow. I was up early Saturday morning, Caitlin was already in the family room watching her shows, and I gave her a little wave as I stopped in the doorway. Have you had breakfast yet? Yep, she stated as she waved her milk-drenched spoon in the air, sloshing milk drops onto the carpet. Okay, be quiet, mom's still asleep and I have work to do in my office. Okay, okay dad, she said a little too loud and I chuckled. Well that didn't work. About 8.30 I called my lawyer cell, knowing he worked from home on Saturday mornings. Morning Bill, Matthew Franks here. Good morning Matt Doc guess this isn't a joyous call. He responded, already knowing the answer. That's correct, time to put the plan in motion. Found out that Jason served his wife yesterday. Do we know if Kells has seen a lawyer yet? I don't think so, but I'll give the sleaze a call and make sure, he continued. I'll meet you in a half hour at the coffee house. Have you sign and date the forms along with my assistant to notarize. We'll file first thing Monday morning and have her served at lunch. Sounds good to me. See you shortly. I arrived early at the coffee shop, smiling weakly at the cutie behind the counter. I picked up my order and found a comfortable chair next to the fireplace. My mind drifted. I never thought I would be divorcing the one true love of my life. It's hard to pick the exact moment when you realize your comfortable life was coming to an end, but I can come pretty close. It was a traffic ticket, you know, one of those automatic red light camera deals. When you run a red light and they take a picture of the driver. The car's license plate along with the date and time stamp. That was it. I found the ticket when I got the mail. I laughed and knew it was Kelsey's right off. She always pushed those lights when she was in a hurry. I opened it, figuring I would just pay it and not say a word. Nothing good could come from confronting her with it. There captured in the picture of the driver was Kelsey and to the right of her was the shoulder and arm of an obvious man. It didn't show his face, but I knew who it was. No big deal. She could have been at lunch or going to a meeting. Could have been anything. I checked the date and time stamp. March 5th at 1439. Something about that date didn't sit well with me. It hadn't been that long ago. I started looking back through my phone. I found our text messages from the 5th. Kelsey at 1119 dropping by Mary's after work to pick up clothes for Kate. I remember thinking this wasn't anything unusual. Mary's daughter was a couple of years older and we got cute hand-me-downs from them, though I thought Mary usually brought them to work. But still, my radar didn't ping, Matt at 12.03 no worries, want me to make dinner. Kelsey at 12.10 yeah. Matt at 12.11 what time should we expect you? Kelsey at 12.12 ish, we might chat for a minute. Matt at 12.42 okay, have fun. Kelsey at 2.10 thanks, we will. That bitch. I thought as I checked the intersection on Google Maps, it was on the opposite end of town from where Marianne lived. But still, it could be innocent, right? But then I started to put the pieces together. Since late November, Kelsey had been standoffish. I noticed all through the holidays how we fought over the little things. By January, she didn't like to hold my hand while shopping or walking. Our general conversation topics became limited to work or Caitlin. We didn't talk about our dreams anymore. We didn't talk about family vacations or our future. I have had a trust fund since I was little. My great-grandfather purchased a lot of undeveloped land in the Pacific Northwest. He logged much of it off and made a killing. Then as the local city grew, he sold parcels of land back to the city. When he died, I benefited from those purchases with a few one okay going to this trust. It grew again when my grandfather died. 
again letting the trust grow. I never needed to get into it since my family was self-supported. The balance stabilized and even grew a little since it was set up in a way to accrue interest. After my father passed, and with my mother already deceased, I inherited his whole estate. I simply rolled his trust into mine. With the accumulated wealth, the three of us were close to being set for life, but Kelsey and I continued to work and grow our capital in preparation for our retirement. I was encouraged to, and obtained, a prenuptial to protect the fund when Kelsey and I got married. Every few years we updated the prenup and our wills. One item that always remained the same was the standard what's mine, is mine, and what's yours, is yours divorce clause. We did add a clause in for Caitlin to receive an education in the event of my death or if we divorced. Of course, there were provisions concerning the mechanism and circumstances surrounding my death. Obviously, Kelsey would not see anything if she had a hand in my demise. Because of this, I had access to a family lawyer and accounting services for years. I contacted my lawyer and got the name of the best local divorce attorney. I set up a meeting with him by the end of the week to see my options. Since we had a solid prenup, he wasn't worried about any financial issues. I explained that I wasn't ready to take any drastic actions at this point, just wanted to know what steps to take next. Well Matt, we could have a pie look into what's going on and see if there is anything to worrying about. Unfortunately, all my investigators are busy right now. It would be several weeks before they could invest any time in your case, Bill Manson explained. I really don't want to wait, I'm already losing sleep over this. Are there any other options, I asked, well, there is one. He's trying to get things started but few really trust him. We call him Larry the Sleaze, Bill went to explain, he's an ex-cop who was retired due to a history of complaints and some questionable activity. He could get started right away, but I don't know if I would recommend a lasting relationship with him. Why do you call him the sleaze? I asked laughing. I want things legal, so if we do find something, we'll be on solid ground if we have to move forward. Totally, he's legal. He has a habit of getting information, such as detailed pictures and videos along with emails and phone conversations that, let's just say, walk a fine line of being a lad in court. But I'm told, what he finds is solid proof of infidelity one way or the other. Okay, as long as he's legal. We could always pay him off and switch to a more reputable pie in a couple of weeks. I pause do you think he can he start today? I'll give him a call and find out. I'll be your go-between here at the office. I'll let you know later today. Sounds good. Thank you. I filled out a bunch of documents for both the lawyer and the sleaze, connected him with my accountant, and left a retainer from my personal account. Kelsey didn't have access to it, so she wouldn't know what I was up to. I didn't want to startle her, especially if I was wrong and it's just a rough patch in our marriage. While this was going on, I had decided to try to repair my relationship with my wife. My life experiences have told me that people don't just change and do uncharacteristic things unless there is a catalyst. Since I didn't know what that was for my wife, and I didn't know if we were past the point of no return, I decided to make sure I was taking care of business as a husband. I picked up my game and did my best to make sure she felt loved and valued as an equal partner in our relationship. I doted on her and made it my goal to be the husband that all her friends were jealous of. I was refuted at every turn and it became obvious that we had already passed the point of no return. One Thursday afternoon, I was invited back to my Bill's office to receive what the sleaze had found. I was shown hours of footage of them dating, fucking, and playing the happy couple. There were photos, phone call recordings, and both of their personal email messages. I was both impressed and disgusted with the sleaze, had agreed that his nickname was well earned. I sat there devastated. Never would I think that she would have had an affair with Jason Stanton. I guess I could see how she would be attracted to Jason. He was tall, handsome, and well built. He was culture and on an upward trajectory in both his work and personal life. He had taken over Kelsey's department about a year ago. As his personal assistant, Kelsey would work closely with Jason. It offered him an endless amount of time to get to know and work his way into Kelsey's life. Jason was a college baseball star, and the only thing that prevented him from going to the majors was a shoulder injury in his senior year. I mean, who wouldn't be impressed with this guy? I just never thought Kelsey would allow him in between us. This was all too overwhelming. 
I couldn't breathe, my chest tightened, my vision blurred, and I felt like I was going to pass out. I scooted my chair back and placed my head between my knees and tried to concentrate on my breathing. In, out, in, and out till my head clear. The feeling of loss and emptiness can't be described. I had just lost my best friend, my confidant, my lover, and the mother to my child. At that moment, I couldn't see a way out of this, and then the sleaze piled on more. He played a recording from the day before and was why he wanted to get us all together. Kelsey, really? You love me, I could hear the excitement in her voice. Jason. Yes, my darling. You are the most perfect woman. I love you and I want us to be a family. Kelsey. You mean, you, me, and Caitlin? Jason. Of course. Kelsey. What about Matt, and, ah, uh, Shannon? Jason. We'll divorce them, you'll get Caitlin, and we'll live as a happy family. There was a gap in the conversation. I assumed that Kelsey was digesting the bomb her lover just dropped on her dot dot. You do love me dot don single quotes to you Kels. Kelsey, yes, of course, I do. I never gave much thought to leaving Matt, is all. Jason. Well, give it some thought. He could never give you what I can. You will be the bell of every ball. Be part of high society. Go places and see things that loser could never afford. I could hear the contempt in his voice and imagine the expressions his face made as he spoke. Kelsey. It would kill him to lose Kate. We are his world. Jason. I'll be ten times the father than that loser ever could be. In a year she won't even want to go and see him. Kelsey. Why do you hate him so much? What has he done to you? Her voice had a tint of concern in it. To be honest, I wanted to know as well. Jason. He doesn't deserve you Kels, that loser has no ambition and no drive to be anything more than what he is today dot dot dot. A drone, making someone else rich, Kelsey, you do know he is a plant manager, right? He has 400 people in his plant and they have the highest production rates and the largest revenue per square foot of any of the plants. I was a little proud that Kelsey knew that, even though I would have preferred this conversation to happen in their lunchroom and not in a hotel room. Jason. He's a pussy, a weak beta that had no drive or ambition in school, and he hasn't even earned his MBA. He's served his purpose, hon. I can beat his dick into the dirt any day of the week. Kelsey. Jason. Don't ever think you are that much better than Matt. He's not a weakling. You don't know about his younger days. He ran with some bad guys and is very good with guns. He almost went down a bad path himself until he decided to go to school. That's why he didn't go to college for a few years after high school. It sounded like she was bragging now. Kelsey, he's stronger and tougher than you give him credit for. Please promise me you won't get physical with him. I wouldn't want either of you hurt, him for Kate's sake and you for mine. But I'm not in love with him anymore. I wish I were, but you have replaced him as my man, my love. She paused as if she was thinking, how would this work, and when? Jason. We'll divorce them, at the same time, I've got a few things to get in order before I serve Shannon. But with her psychiatric issues and the fact we haven't had sex in a year, it won't be an issue to get it done. I'll split everything 50 50ths she hardly contests. Kelsey. Okay, but you have to file on Shannon before I leave and see a lawyer, she was defiant. I guess she wanted to hedge her baits and not lose her comfortable life at the moment, even for her true love, her man. Jason. Deal. Now come here woman dot 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 your man needs his dick sucked. I asked for the tape to be turned off at this point. I didn't need to hear any more. I looked over at Bill and said, how do I deal with this? You strike first Matt, but what if she changes her mind? They rarely do, Mr. Franks. I'm afraid they are to the point where nothing you do or say will cause them to stop or repent. I got my first good look at the sleaze. He was in his 30s, clean cut athletically built, and his suit fit him well, nothing like I had imagined. He was respectful and probably right I thought. I started to see him as Larry and not the sleaze. I got the feeling this guy was really on my side. Even if I was paying, he cared and was disgusted by what he had seen and heard from these two. And would you want her after what you know now, Larry added. You're probably right Larry. Turning to Bill. Bill, give me a day or two to decide and I'll call you, okay? Sounds good Matt, can I start the framework of the docs and we can add the details later or trash the whole thing if you want, 
Yes, let's do that. Larry followed me out. He handed me his card. That has my personal number on it, Mr. Franks, in case you ever need me on the side. Please, Larry, call me Matt. Thank you. Matt, I know some people who could help you get revenge if you decide to go that route. I mean they call me Larry the Sleaze for a reason, he stated with a smile. Laughing, I said, good to know Larry, I'll let you know if I need that kind of help. Seriously though, thank you for the offer. I don't think I could do that to Kells, but I like knowing I have a friend if I decide to go down that path. Larry smiled at me and waved as he headed for his car. I thought about my choices all weekend long. I could barely concentrate on anything else and it appeared Kelsey never even noticed I was deciding the fate of our family. It did occur to me that she had already decided that for all of us. I wrestled with all the feelings of doubt, anger, fear, and frustration. The humiliation and loss of my perceived manhood or what hurt the most. My self-identity was my work and my family. Who would I be without my family? I thought. I worried about Caitlin and how she would transition into this next chapter. It irritated me to think about that arrogant bastard raising my daughter. I even had flashes of him walking my daughter down the aisle at her wedding. My emotions and thoughts were all over the place. No matter how much booze I poured over them, I didn't receive any clarity until Sunday morning. Sitting on the back deck nursing a hell of a headache, it occurred to me, this was probably going to happen no matter how much I fought it. I had already lost my wife, I could see the contempt in her eyes. I had already lost my family, what mattered now was on whose and what terms was I going to lose everything. Then an old saying hit me, lead, follow, or get the hell out of the way. Well, I wasn't going to get out of the way, and I wasn't ready to follow those cheaters, so, I had only one choice, lead. Monday morning, I called Bill, Bill, Matt Franks here, good morning Matt, Come any closer to a decision? Yes, I have. I would like you to complete all the documents required, and only the legal picks that Larry obtained. Split everything 50 fiftieths. I paused. Do you want to sell the house? Yes, we took a low interest loan from my trust fund to buy it, so we had been paying ourselves all this time. We'll split any equity we get, but I'll recover the full loan amount and interest we have paid over the years. It's a win for me. I answered dot dot. Also, please add 200k for Kells out of my trust, consider it payment for services rendered. She might be more amiable if she knows she isn't walking out of this completely broke. I want primary custody of Kate, I know that will be tough, but maybe Larry can find some dirt on our boat Jason that would make him look less like a suitable father to a young girl. I heard he was a first class frat boy in college, maybe he got a little fresh with some of his conquests, sick Larry on him. Please, have a backup plan for Kate, if we get too much pushback on the primary custody thing, please write me up the most generous shared custody plan you have ever heard of. I stopped for a second to allow Bill to catch up with me. Also, I want to sue Jason for alienation of love and affection, and find out a way to get his wife Shannon involved in the mess, I want her to be aware of what's going on in a complete legal above board kind of way. And speaking of her, please create another divorce set up for adultery and have it ready for her. I'll pay her fees, I think she should get what's coming to her, and make it ugly. We can have them both served in the alienation suite, but you have to know it won't go anywhere. I'll also need to get her to sign a contract with me, I can get the form started but without her consent or information, there isn't much else I can do," Bill explained. I understand, I just want to shake the tree some and since you're at it, I want to sue Kelsey's company for allowing her to sleep with her boss. I'm pretty sure they don't have a morality clause in their handbook, but it has to be shady for any company to allow this to happen under their watch. He is her direct supervisor, I know it probably won't go anywhere, but again, let's shake that tree and see what falls out. Okay Matt, this is going to get expensive and then go up from there, you are talking a lot of man hours, and if it is contested, even more. I understand. It's only money and at this point, I will empty my trust if I need to make sure those to do not profit more than what they are due. And as my daddy used to say any time you get a lawyer involved, you're just negotiating how much it's going to cost. I've got it, so I might as well use it. Dill was laughing at my snide comment about lawyers as he spoke. Well he sounds like he was a smart man, you know you don't have to give her any money from your trust, your prenup is airtight. 
I know Bill, but I have thought about this all weekend and figured if I don't leave her destitute, she might be more willing to go along with my demands and she kind of deserves it. She has worked hard and helped me protect it from unnecessary draws. Both of us were counting on it as our old age nest day. I was thinking it might give her an edge over Jason so, when she finds herself out on her own, she doesn't have to be as reliant on him. She deserves more, but there is no way in hell I'm going to give that cheating bastard Jason anything more of my life than he has already taken. I mean, my wife should be enough. I was feeling the rage as I spoke just thinking about Jason taking over the life that was supposed to be mine. I always considered myself to be fair in my dealings and I wanted to make sure I treated Kelsey fairly, even though she hasn't returned the favor. My solace was that I was sure Caitlin would approve of my actions later when she understood how our family fell apart. One last thing, Bill, don't file yet. I want to have everything done, eyes dotted and the T's crossed and ready to roll. I want to wait for her to make the first move. This will give me more time with Kate in our family home. I'm aware there will be a time when I need to pull the trigger, but I want it to be at the last moment when I can't hang with it anymore. Got it, we can leave it, undated, and not notarized till you're ready. I work on Saturday mornings from home, so if it falls apart on a weekend you can give me a call. We still won't be able to file till Monday morning, but I can have somebody standing at the door when they open and have them served the same day. Coot. It's a plan. We said our goodbyes and hung up. I pulled Larry's card from my pocket and dialed. Larry. Matt Franks, how are you? I'm good. He replied. Are you ready for some sleazy fun? Well, sort of. But I want you to wait for my work. Okay. No problem, Matt. What are we talking about? Can we meet in person? Yep. Give me an hour and I'll meet you at the Duncan on 6th. Sounds good. I reply. I was already waiting when he pulled into the lot. He got some coffee and a snack and then sat down opposite of me. Dot dot. I want you to put together the nasty file. Photos, video, recordings, everything you have. We need to find a way to get it to Shannon Sten anonymously. Maybe email. No problem. I know a guy who works the dark web. Larry stated. Is that all? What about posting the videos to a porn site or sending the nasty to her parents or co-workers? He asked. Bo, he is sleazy I thought. No. Kells will still have to be seen around town. I wouldn't want her so humiliated that she leaves town with Kate. And I still love the stupid bitch. Even if she isn't in love with me anymore. I slipped an envelope with $5,000 cash in it across the table. This should get you started but let me know if you need more. Larry thumbed the cash and looked up at me. 3K would get this done. He may be sleazy, but at least he is honest. Keep the rest as a retainer. I may need your expertise later. Don't forget, sit on the file till I call you. I want them caught off guard and I have my reasons for letting them make the first move. Oh, we should also get an idea of what issues his wife has. Her medical history might play into anything we decide later. Is that possible? I asked a smiling Larry, and then, I just smiled and nodded back to him. And did Bill ask you to look into Jason's college days? I'm looking for something I can use against them if we fight over custody. He again nodded his head and made a couple of notes in his notebook. We finished our coffees and chatted about his career as a cop and people we might know. We finished, shook hands, and parted ways. That was three months ago. I was brought back to reality as Bill arrived and then shortly after his assistant and Larry. So, it's go time, huh? Bill asked as everyone seated around us dot dot. Yep, sounds like it. Larry, do we know if Kells has been to a lawyer yet? Not that I'm aware of. I did a quick search of her emails after Bill called and didn't see anything mentioned. I'll take a closer look today and we'll know by Monday morning. Larry stated. La 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 la. I didn't hear that. Dill exclaimed while plugging his ears with his index fingers, I can't know these things, Larry. Larry smiled and nodded while giving me a sly wink. What about Jason? Any dirty laundry? I asked hopefully. Yeah. He was investigated along with his frat. Something to do with date rape drugs and some underage girls at parties. I got copies of everything and passed it along to Bill already. Dill looked up and nodded his confirmation and added, I've got them if we need them for the custody hearing. Pulling out the documents we had been working on for the past few months showed me where to sign. As I sign, 
Bill's assistant notarized, I spoke to the group. Larry, can you find out who Shannon Stanton hired as a lawyer, and let Bill know? Then, Bill, if he's worth a damn, can you share our legal file with him? I asked the group. What if he's not a decent lawyer? Asked Bill. Then we get Shannon in touch with you somehow, but I would rather we do it the right way. Larry, I don't think we need to send her the nasty. Larry nodded as he sipped his coffee and Bill looked between the two of us. Bill, can I pick up the docs Monday afternoon? I'll give Kells the docs first myself and let her know what's going down, and then can you have her officially served on Tuesday? Bill nodded his understanding and spoke to his assistant about the fillings and to get a server ready for Tuesday. And then, I would like Jason and their company served on Tuesday afternoon. I guess we can take Shannon off the alienation suit since she will be in the loop soon enough. Bill, you can share the file with Shannon's lawyer on Monday afternoon as long as he doesn't blow my chat with Kells Monday night. I sat back and sigh. By Wednesday, this should be well underway. Matt, have you thought about where Kelsey will stay Monday night? Bill inquired. Not until just now. Any issue with her staying at the house for a few days? No. As long as you don't get a restraining order and she agrees. I wouldn't sleep with her. Legally I don't think it's an issue, but might be uncomfortable for you. I would be concerned of what a less than scrupulous lawyer would do with that information, Bill added. Okay. I'll give her a week to find a spot. We aren't having sex now. I don't see a problem. Oh, did you mean, actually sleep in the same bed? Oh, but our docs do give me temporary control of the house and Kate, right? I asked. Yes. Till her lawyer files a motion and gets it all reversed, or till we all come to an agreement. I meant actually sleep in the same bed, it just might give a strange vibe to the filings, Bill stated. No worries, we are not sleeping together now. Hey Larry, what did you find out about Shannon's medical? She has been fighting depression and a bipolar disorder for years. Apparently, the meds killed her sex drive van Mr. Wonderful went looking dot dot dot. I could tell Larry was going to add more and cut himself off when he remember, I was married to the more Jason found, I smiled at him. I don't suppose we want to know how you found this out. Larry just smiled and shook his head and Dill feigned shock. Bill, is that any concern to us? I asked. No, not now, it might play in later when we get to the custody part and find out who is staying with who and when. We can have it mentioned as a condition in the final draft for Caitlin to never be left alone with her. Bill was busy making notes on his iPad as he spoke. Okay, I don't see that being an issue since they don't have kids and they are divorcing as well. Might as well be safe than sorry later. I grimaced as I spoke. Divorce is a messed up business I thought to myself. We all chatted for a few more minutes and one by one broke up our strategy session and moved on with our day. I felt a little depressed the rest of the weekend. My duties to be executed on Monday were weighing heavy on me. Kelsey never noticed, not that I expected her to. Sunday, I called my aunt and arranged for her to pick up Caitlin from school on Monday and for her to spend the night so I could speak with Kelsey about some important family matters. They lived on a farm outside of town and Kate loved playing with their dogs and feeding the animals. She would drop Caitlin off at school Tuesday, I figured we would break the news to Caitlin Tuesday night. I let Caitlin know of the arrangements and she was excited though a little confused why on a Monday night, I again just passed it off as mom and dad needed some private time to discuss stuff, she bought it, reluctantly. I'd been sleeping in the spare room more and more and again, Kelsey never mentioned it. She looked relieved when she saw me head to it at dead time. I lay there Sunday night, reviewing my checklist then double checking my plan, finally drifting off to sleep somewhere during the early morning hours. Monday morning, bright and early I called my VP of operations and explained that I needed the week off. I also called my assistant and my senior production manager to pass on any details they needed to know while I was out. Around 1 p.m. I dropped into Bill's office and happened to catch Larry there as well. I saw the stack of papers on the desk and the flurry of activity in the office told me everyone had been busy. Matt, we filed at the courthouse this morning. And here are Kelsey's documents like you asked and we have arranged for the official service at your home around 9am on Tuesday. Does that work? Dill asked as he handed me the envelopes. Yeah. That should work. I'm going to encourage her to take the rest of the week off. I'll call you if that were to change. I responded. Fine not fine. 
Bill paused for a moment to collect his thoughts before continuing. Larry found Shannon's lawyer and he is rather goat. So I sent him our files and he was salivating. At first glance, it looks like he will be suggesting a countersuit for adultery and a ton more of their assets than a 50-50th split and he has promised not to do anything till the morning, so we are good there. Okay gentlemen, have we forgotten anything? I asked, a little depressed and down. It looks like Kelsey has an appointment with her attorney next week, best I can tell from her calls and emails today. And Matt, please let me know if you need any other assistance, yeah. Larry asked discreetly, earning another sharp look from Bill as to what we had going on dot dot. Okay, good. I will Larry, but I think we are good, I responded, hoping I didn't need to get any dirtier than I already have. I guess it all depends on Kelsey and Jason now. I left Bill's office and texted Kelsey. Matt at 155 Kels, are you going to be home at a decent hour tonight? Kelsey at 2025, 30-ish, why? What's up? Matt at 20 for nothing, I was a little distracted this weekend and wanted to try and make it up a little tonight. I arranged for Aunt Alex to get Kate tonight and stay over. Thought I would bring home dinner, any cravings? Kelsey at 16 how sweet, Chinese, Matt at 20 done, I'll have dinner ready at 5.30. I felt like a total ass setting her up this way, but it wasn't uncommon for me to do this lately. I hope she just figure I was going out of my way to be extra nice and loving. Monday night at 5.30. Kelsey got home around 5.15 and changed clothes as I set the table and distributed the food. I poured a couple of glasses of wine and was sitting at the table when she showed up. She took a long tug from her glass and we passed the food back and forth. We carried on small talk as we ate, and she didn't appear to have any clue about what was going to happen. How does the rest of your week look? I asked as our eating died down and we both were just picking at the favorites on our plates. Pretty light. Did you want to plan something? She asked, giving me a sideways glance. No. I thought you might want to take the week off after we chat. I spoke in a monotone voice trying to keep any emotion out of my voice. Why would I do that? I know Kells. I started as I placed the envelope on the table in front of her. She just looked down at it and then back up at me taking a sip of her wine. I know about Jason and you planning on filing for divorce. She coughed a little as she choked on her wine and gave me a blank stare. I could see the gears working in her head trying to figure out how I knew or what she was going to do to slow me down. What divorce? She finally choked out. The one you are meeting with a lawyer about next week and the one Jason already filed on Shannon. I know you are in love with him and are planning to take Kate and leave me. I opened the packet for her and slid a sum of the photos towards her. Her eyes got big and she set her glass down and picked up the photos and looked through them. I could see her eyes moisten and she started to hiccup a little as she does when she gets over emotional. I'm so sorry Matthew, I never meant for any of this to happen. I, I don't know what else to say she trailed off looking down at the table. I know Kells, I've known about your plans for months. I've had time to make some peace with it all. I'm greatly disappointed in you and I'm extremely hurt. I held my breath for a moment to regain my confidence and to control the anger swelling inside of me. The only thing I want to know is did I do something, or not do something that drove you to Jason. Oh God no, she exclaimed looking me in the eyes for a second and then retreated to the table, I'm guessing because of guilt and shame. It just kind of happened, you haven't done, you didn't do anything to drive me away. You were a great husband and father I just fell for him, she finally got out, I was both disappointed and relieved. I guess I can't help it if she just fell out of love with me and decided to take Jason on. He has had plenty of time to worm his way into her heart and push me out and there was nothing I could do now to prevent it. Our marriage was dead and all that was left was the paperwork. I pulled out the terms of the divorce and handed it to her. Here is the settlement I'm offering. I have already filed. So, you don't have to unless you disagree with what I'm asking for. The highlights are dot the prenup is in effect so my trust is out of the question, I'm suggesting we sell anything we don't want and split it 50 50 ths this of course includes the house. Since I filed first, I'm asking for full custody of Caitlin and minimal child support from you. Of course, you'll have a very liberal visitation schedule. I will keep her on my insurance but of course, you'll need to get your own. You keep your 401k and any investments you had coming into the marriage as well as the inheritance you got from your mom. I wouldn't want to take anything that is truly yours from you. 
We'll split any investments we started as a couple, Kate and I will stay in the house till we sell it. I'm also releasing $200,000 from my trust for you to set yourself up with. I would recommend you get a prenup pan protected if you get together with Jason, as you plant. I would hate to see you lose anything. I want to make sure you can be self-sufficient on your own since I'm asking not to pay any spousal support. I pause to watch her soak in what I just laid out for her. I think I should get Caitlin. A girl is going to need her mother as she matures, she said flatly. I agree completely, but you can do that remotely through visitations and calls. Frankly, I don't trust Jason with our daughter. I already know that he plans on trying to turn her away from me with gifts and his swell personality. Since he couldn't produce his own kid, he wants mine. And I think I'm being more than generous allowing him to have my wife already. He doesn't get my daughter as well. I understand you will want to negotiate the custody part. I suggest we let the lawyers earn their keep and try to be civil. I suggested as a peace offering when I saw her face go red during the discussion about Kate and Jason. He would never hurt her, and it will be up to you if you drive her away. Separating her from her mother is a good way to get that done. Well, either way, she stays with me until we get something else figured out. You can stay here in the master bedroom for a few nights or the week until you get things figured out. Kelsey, I still love you with all of my heart. I thought we were going to conquer the world together. But you're killing me here, and I don't know what else to do. My world is coming apart and I'm trying hard to be fair and kind. I really don't want to hurt you the same way you have hurt me. Trust me though, if you go nuclear or let Jason get involved in our business, I will reply in kind. And darling, I have resources that neither of you have. My tone changed and she could finally hear the anger in my words. I could play hardball if pushed, she had seen it before. So please, let's put this on simmer and let the lawyers figure it out. I would really like to be polite and courteous with you at any time we meet. I feel it will be important for Caitlin to see us be sociable. I plan for both of us to be deeply involved in our daughter's life, I pleaded with her. I really didn't want this to be a knockdown drag, am out fight. I'm off the rest of the week, and according to the law you have to be officially served, that is scheduled here at the house for 9 a.m. I didn't want you embarrassed at work, so you may consider calling in and taking a few days off as well. I know it will be tense for us both being home, but I thought we would sit down with Caitlin tomorrow night or keep her home Wednesday to explain what's happening. Thoughts? Kelsey had stopped eating altogether by now and looked a little pale and sickly. I think the fully facts of her actions were finally settling in on her. She only had herself to blame. I was fat, dumb, and happy until she fired off this shitstorm. She looked up at me, did her best impression of a fish out of water, and then said, Okay Matt, you have obviously planned well and got ahead of us, I'm not sure how, but you did. I'll call in to work first thing and at least be home through Wednesday. Do you think Alex can keep her tomorrow night as well? Maybe just keep her out of school tomorrow and bring her home Wednesday morning so we can talk. Larry the sleaze, I said proudly before continuing as she gave me a confused look. My pie. Larry found this out after I got some hints that something was rotten in Denmark. I'll call Aunt Alex right away. I think that's a great idea. Kelsey gave me a little head nod as I mentioned Larry while she picked up the papers. I gave her and said goodnight. I guess she needed some alone time to process the event and watch her head into the master bedroom where she closed and locked the door. Which wasn't a problem since I had moved the majority of my everyday clothes and needs into the spare room earlier. I called my aunt and explained we had a little family issue. We were working through and of course she agreed to keep Caitlin one more night and drop her off Wednesday mid-morning. I also spoke to Caitlin and let her know she wasn't going to school the next day, she was still confused but okay with it. I told her that mom and I would explain everything on Wednesday. As I put things away and got ready for bed, I could hear Kelsey murmuring through the door as if she were on the phone and later light sobs as she mourned the loss of our marriage. Tuesday, I could hear Kelsey was up early and making plans about with her work as she came downstairs in casual clothes. Right at nine, she answered the door and accepted her official service and packet, minus the photos and transcripts. She would have become familiar with those last night in her room. Right after she grabbed her keys and purse and took off, she didn't mention where to, but I figured it was to meet Jason, her lawyer, or someone else to commiserate with. 
I got a call from Bill later in the afternoon to let me know that both Jason and their company had been served with our suits. It also appeared that Jason was served with Shannon's countersuit around the same time and was coming unglued. Dill mentioned I should probably stay low and watch out. Apparently the server mentioned some threats towards me from Jason. I never figured Jason would be too stupid since he was getting everything he wanted. But, just in case I went to my gun safe fan pulled out my 1911 in point for 5 ACP, made sure it was loaded, cocked and locked, and tucked it down in my chair as I watched TV. I was standing by the sink a few hours later when I saw a black BMW come to a sliding halt in my driveway and an irate Jason jump out and open his rear door, pulling a baseball bat out. I figured I'd better retreat to my chair where my cell phone was located and call 911. Knowing that the door was locked, I felt secure. I dialed 911 and told the operator that my wife's boyfriend was in my driveway with a baseball bat. They dispatched some units my way. Just about that time, I heard a second vehicle arrive outside, figuring it to be Kelsey from the screaming and pitch of voices who was hearing. Then there was a high-pitched yelp. I jumped as my front door splintered from a firm kick and a furious Jason stormed through yelling at the top of his lungs, you scumsucker dot dot dot. You got me fire and messed up my divorce. He was seething and foaming at the mouth. I slipped my right hand down onto the grip of the pistol. The feel of it calmed me. Jason was swinging the bat around wildly and I could hear Kelsey screaming from outside, begging him to come back out. I took your wife dot 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 and now I'm going to grill you and take your daughter to dot 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 you weakling. I allowed him five more feet before I pulled my pistol from the seat cushion. His eyes were narrowed and could tell his judgment was compromised. His bat rose above his head, but it wasn't going to be very ineffective at 25 feet. The crack of the round in the chamber was deafening. The first round penetrated a couple of inches below the sternum, zip hold process, and to his right. The round grazed a rib as it penetrated his liver and exited somewhere in his back. I was always taught to triple tap at my targets and working off instincts the second round ignited fractions of a second after the first. Due to the recoil and having more control of my weapon, the second round was on target. Hitting the center of the sternum and a couple of fingers above the zip hole this time, I knew I was on target. The bullet shattered his sternum and punctured his heart. Jason slowed and I think it was just momentum that carried him the next hobbled step, and I'm sure he was already collapsing as the third round exited the barrel. I caught a glimpse of movement by the door, but I was too focused on the task at hand to pay any attention. The final round entered Jason's slightly open not splintering teeth and exited at the base of his skull. If Jason wasn't dead, after two rounds, the third round separating his brain stem made sure the job was done. The round exited and lodged itself into the splintered front door just missing Kelsey's own head by hundredths of an inch. She wasn't on skate. Kelsey was splattered with her lover's skull and brain matter, which landed in her screaming mouth. Jason's body fell to its knees and then landed with some force on its belly and face. I could hear screaming now through my ringing ears. It surprised me how loud the pistol was in close quarters. I was starting to hear sirens and the yelling of the responding officers. Not knowing how extreme the situation was, they laid Kelsey on her belly and handcuffed her in front of the open door. Her screeching and screaming had not reduced until she started vomiting when she released what she was covered in and tasting. I was still shocked at the events which unfolded in front of me and finally focused on the gun pointed at my face and the screaming officer. Freeze, drop the gun. He was ordering and I gained some of my senses dropping the weapon and followed his commands to lay down on the blood splattered floor. The next couple of weeks were hectic and overwhelming. Jason was pronounced dead at the scene. I learned it later through police reports and eyewitness accounts that apparently he was served with my lawsuit and the updated divorce papers from his wife around the same time. It didn't take him long to figure out the photos came from me. Kelsey was standing next to him when he opened the envelope from his wife fan confirmed that she had a matching set. Moments later they both were called into the VP's office where they confessed their affair not realizing what the outcome would be. Knowing that my suit against the company would never go anywhere, and it didn't, the executives felt that they needed to make a statement by firing the managing director for participating in an affair with a subordinate, which they did. I became evil personified for Jason at that moment, and he felt I needed to pay for my standing up against him and ruining his well-laid plans. Grabbing one of his souvenir bats from his office he decided to come to my house. 
Kelsey saw him through a second-floor conference room window and figured out where he might be going. She met him in our driveway and tried to calm him down before he heard me. Of course, neither of them knew I was warned ahead of their arrival and was prepared. Kelsey received a black eye when Jason stiff-armed her as she tried to slow him down from entering our house. Other than that, she received no other injuries or would have nightmares for months that kept several counselors in business for a while. I spoke with her a time or two, between the police interviews, prosecutors, and courtroom visits, but we never had a serious conversation about what occurred in our house. Kelsey became a shell of her former self, I guess losing her husband, lover, and daughter in less than 24 hours will do that. She never recovered. Kelsey stayed around for the divorce and, maybe a month, after it was finalized. She never even obtained an attorney or contested the divorce. I won custody of Caitlin easily. Much to my surprise, she never accepted her portions of the financial settlement. Dill had kept it for her but finally returned it to me a year later. She also never returned to her home and stayed with friends and family until she disappeared. She had a couple of supervised visits with Caitlin, but they were hit or miss. I made sure Caitlin was available for every planned visit whether we had confirmation from Kelsey or not, she would show up around every fourth visit. I was told that Kelsey became addicted to painkillers and other narcotics that were prescribed to calm her and help her become a functioning adult and by the time she disappeared, she was jobless, friendless, and broke. Neither Caitlin, I, or anyone she knew had any contact information for her, and we never heard from her again. We have no idea whatever came of her. We lost a wife and a mother. The house was sold. Caitlin and I bought another home in her school district and tried to take up our lives. We both saw counselors after the traumatic event. Me for six months but eventually had to just bury the hurt and pain and move on. I had a daughter to raise as well as a life to lead. Caitlin spent a few years with a counselor on and off, partly due to her mother's reaction to the event and the abandonment, she had several issues to work through. It took me three years to be squared away enough to even think about dating. Several months later I met a wonderful woman named Jo, who was understanding and respectful to Caitlin's and my experience. We dated much longer and slower than either of us wanted but eventually moved into a physical relationship and about 16 months later we married. We raised Caitlin and Joe's daughter as a family, but never expanded it. Our lives stabilized and improved over time. Our only hiccups were at Caitlin's major life events, her graduations from high school and college. I hired Larry each time to try and find Kelsey, but each lead led to a dead end. The general thinking was that she must have died alone and dissolute somewhere. It was a horrible experience, but we had made the best of it and moved on. I was so glad that I had time to create an action plan and the right people in my corner to execute it accordingly. Subscribe to the channel if you liked the video so you don't miss out on the next one.